I'm coming to question number 25 here is a 65 year old man who presents to the emergency with severe tearing lower back pain that started while he was uh, shoveling snow he has a history of poorly controlled hypertension subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from prep ladder Coming to question number 25, here is a 65 year old man who presses to the emergency with severe tearing lower back pain that started while he was uh, shoveling snow. He has a history of poorly controlled hypertension and coronary artery disease which is 10 to LAD four months previously. Other medical problems include severe oxygen dependent uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Physical examination reveals BP of 190, 110, pulse of 90. Cardiac examination is notable for a normal S1, S2 with a S4 gallop which can be seen in any patient with hypertension. And he's also having a grade 2 by 6 early peaking systolic ejection murmur, which could be completely physiological or it could be an innocent murmur. At the left lower sternal border, ECG shows sinus rhythm, no ST changes. Initial set of cardiac enzymes is normal. CT angiography is performed and is shown here. If the following statement is accurate, first of all, in note the diagnosis. What is the clinical diagnosis and what is the suspicion, first of all? You are suspecting acute aortic syndrome. Why? Because the patient is having this characteristic tearing back pain. Okay. Whenever they give the word tearing chest pain or tearing or ripping chest pain and back pain, always think about aortic dissection or any acute aortic syndrome. So in exam, if they say chest pain that it is to the back and if it's tearing in quality, ripping in quality, especially if it is radiating to the interscapular region in the back, think about acute aortic syndrome. So my primary suspicion is going to be acute aortic syndrome. And hypertension is another clue because majority of the patients at the time of presentation with acute aortic syndrome is going to have hypertension as well. More than 70 to 80 percent of the patients at the time of presentation is going to have hypertension. And in fact, majority of the times acute aortic syndromes are going to be hypertensive emergencies. So what are the types of acute aortic syndrome going to have? The first one is the classic aortic dissection, the most common acute aortic syndrome. More than 90% of the times, you're going to have aortic dissection only. And second is aortic intramural hematoma, which is not that common. It contributes to approximately 6% of acute aortic syndromes. And the third one is much rarer, penetrating atherosclerotic ulcer, where there will be a plaque in the aorta and that's going to ulcer it and that uh, is going to bleed out in the tunica media causing a local hemorrhage. So that's what we call it as penetrating atherosclerotic ulcer. And remember that aortic dissection and aortic intramural hematoma will be treated in a similar fashion. Classification, treatment, everything is the same. There's no difference. But you need to differentiate radiologically. How will you do that? So remember, aortic dissection is due to intimal tear. And because of that, there will be formation of dissection flap or we can call it as intimal flap. Because of intimal tear, you're going to uh, force the blood into the intima and then into the media, which will separate the intima out. Okay, that's what we call it as dissection. And there will be a communication that will be there between the aortic lumen and the aortic wall. And that can be demonstrated through CT angiogram or MR angiogram or by even transesophageal echocardiogram as well. And where does the intimal tear happen? Intimal tear typically happens in the ascending aorta. Most of the time in the right postolateral portion of the aorta. And that's the reason why dissection is very, very common in the ascending aorta. More than 70% of the times, dissection is going to be there in the ascending aorta only. And what about aortic intramural hematoma? It is not due to intimal tear. It is due to rupture of vaso vasorum. Vasa vasorum. These are tiny vessels that supply the aorta itself. Especially the aortic media. And because they rupture, there is going to be a medial hemorrhage. And here, there will be thickening of the aortic wall because of hemorrhage. But there is no communication between the aortic wall and the aortic lumen. And at the same time, there is no intimal flap as well that's formed. Even though in both these conditions, the intima may be slightly displaced, but there's no true flap formation. 
in patients with aortic intramural hematoma. And in both these conditions, there will be displacement of intimal calcium if it is there, but there is no true flap formation in patients with aortic intramural hematoma. And that's what you're going to see in the CT angiogram picture also. So this is a non-contrast CT initially, then you have the CT angiogram picture here. The non-contrast CT, I think you'll all be able to appreciate a dark aortic lumen and you can see a kind of a high attenuation area within the aortic wall which su suggests that the patient is having hemorrhage in the aortic wall. And in the CT angiogram, it is further confirmed that the lumen is showing the contrast but there is no leakage of the contrast into the aortic wall which clearly says that there is no communication between the aortic lumen and the aortic wall and there is significant thickening of the aortic wall as well and this suggests that this patient is actually having a aortic intramural hematoma and now let us look at the options Option number A states that there is low attenuation of the aortic wall. That's wrong because in non contrasty you will see high attenuation of the aortic wall because of hemorrhage. It's not continuous, it's also wrong. It's of course continuous. Intimal calcium is non displaced, is wrong. As I've told, the intimal calcium may be displaced in both dissection as well as in um, aortic intramural hematoma. And aortic intramural hematoma it can be displaced because of the thickening of the aortic wall, especially because of the hemorrhage in the tunica media. And it is circumferential or crescentric is a right statement because uh, the hemorrhage can be circumferential, focal or even crescentic in nature. Right answer for this question is going to be option number D.